I was watching the television the other night, and I saw a report about a school that was making a difference. That was the claim, anyway. One that was taking in troubled kids and had a 98% graduation rate. The administrator of this school was asked if he thought if his school could reach any kid, and the administrator said, no, it's not that easy. Many of these kids are very hard to reach, he said, and with some of them it's impossible. Their heads, he said, are filled with emotional noise. When he said that, it was like an alarm went off for me. Emotional noise. Think of that. You take a kid who has a home and two parents, maybe a sibling or two and some friends. That child has a great chance, no guarantee, mind you, of being stable. The messages he gets from his surroundings are constant, consistent, soothing, and strong. He or she has a place in the world, and they matter. They are told that, and they believe that, and they also believe they have a responsibility to work hard and make something of themselves, turn themselves into a solid adult who can make a contribution to a business or a community. If you take away the home, or a parent, or two, you run the high risk of damaging the child. Suddenly their heads, instead of being tuned to a clear signal, are filled with chatter, clutter, dissonance, sirens. Emotional noise. That noise can be like a screen or a shield, keeping other people, such as teachers, away. A child can be so packed with emotional noise that they can't hear the voice of reason, an offer of relief, or the promise of hope. That noise can drown out or block any attempt to get inside. I have been thinking and writing about people who are lost. A person whose head is filled with emotional noise is lost. They won't have a sense of direction or a goal. They are very likely to be nervous or agitated, even angry, and they will be prone to losing their temper, even over something that seems trivial. They won't have the ability to focus, to concentrate on a task. They may appear to be listening, but they can't hear. They're all jammed up with emotional noise. They are disturbed. I believe that this emotional noise can find form and expression in music. Music can mimic what the person feels inside. The disorder, dismay, and energy building up with no outlet suddenly appears as music. I think blues is the sound of emotional noise. I think jazz is a pure conversion of emotional noise. I think rock and roll was an outburst of emotional noise. Rap and hip-hop flow from a pipeline connected directly to emotional noise. Emotional noise can burst out as music. And the disoriented people suffering from this disorder, for that is exactly what it is, just noise, not order, when they hear this music, it is with a huge sense of relief. It is exactly on their wavelength. It sounds the way they feel, and so they respond to it, celebrate it. When I see a kid wearing headphones or some musical device that pumps the sound directly into his ears, I see someone who is stuffing himself with emotional noise. Or when a car pulls up next to mine, windows tinted, and the entire machine is vibrating to the sound of the music being played, that's someone living on the beat of emotional noise. Before hearing that music, maybe they thought they were just going crazy. They couldn't think straight. They felt like they were being torn in 16 different directions, none of them true. But when they hear that noise, that sound, it's like an anthem, and they follow it almost mindlessly because that sound is familiar to them. It's not strange. It's emotional noise, broadcasting outside where everyone can hear it, where it exists as a challenge, crying out, here I am, deal with it. Many people will deplore it, say it isn't music at all, it's just noise. In a way, they're right, but what they think doesn't matter. Not to the ones who are listening avidly to that sound, whose very being resonates with that emotional noise.